In 2008, the ACCORD study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This study was one of the most profound pieces of literature that exists regarding why conventional treatments for diabetes simply do not work. In the study, 10,000 patients with diabetes were designated to receive intensive or regular therapy to lower their blood sugar. These patients were monitored and their risks of heart attack, stroke, and death were evaluated. The patients who had their blood sugar lowered the most had a higher risk of death. Let me repeat that because I really want you to hear and understand it. The patients who had their blood sugar lowered the most had a higher risk of death. Now, how could this happen if, as we believe, elevated blood sugar is the cause of all evils of diabetes? Why would lowering blood sugar lead to worse outcomes? You know, the study had to be stopped after three years and a half because it was evident that aggressive blood sugar lowering led to more deaths and more heart attacks. This completely explodes the way conventional medicine understands and treats diabetes. It's a revolutionary study. Yet for those of us who've been working to understand the real causes of diabetes, it isn't surprising at all. How could lowering blood sugar increase your risk of death? The reason is very simple. Elevated blood sugar is a symptom of underlying metabolic, physiologic, and biochemical processes that are out of balance. So lowering blood sugar with medications that does not address these underlying imbalances that gave rise to the high blood sugar in the first place causes problems. This may surprise you, but many of the methods used to lower blood sugar, such as insulin or oral hypoglycemic drugs, actually make the problem worse by increasing insulin levels, which is the real root of evil in diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a disease of too much, not too little insulin. Insulin is the real driver of problems with diabetes. That means you don't need more insulin in your blood. And you don't simply need to just lower your blood sugar. What you need to do is treat the underlying causes that gave rise to the high blood sugar and in insulin in the first place. And that is insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes is a disease of insulin resistance. Let me explain what that means. Insulin resistance occurs when your diet is full of empty calories, has an abundance of quickly absorbed sugars and carbohydrates like bread and rice and pasta and potatoes. When this happens, your body becomes resistant to the effects of insulin. You need more and more to do the same job of keeping your blood sugar even. And then you develop insulin resistance. As your insulin levels increase, it leads to a whole series of problems. It leads to an appetite that's out of control. It leads to increased weight gain around your belly. It causes more inflammation and oxidative stress or free radicals, and a whole myriad of other downstream effects, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, low HDL or good cholesterol, high triglycerides, and thickening of your blood, which leads to more clotting and strokes and heart attacks. It also increases the rates of cancer and dementia and depression. These are all the result of insulin resistance and too much insulin. High insulin levels are the first sign of the problem. The higher your insulin levels, the greater your likelihood for insulin resistance, the more problems you're going to have in the future. Elevated blood sugar is not the source of the problem. Understanding this has a profound impact on the whole way we think about diabetes. It's not simply a matter of shifting our focus from one type of medication to another. This completely alters the fundamental way we understand this disease. In fact, in some sense, diabetes isn't a disease at all. It's simply a continuum that stretches from optimal health to full-blown illness. Now, let me take a few minutes to explain this because it's essential for you to understand if you want to fully realize the potential of this program. Most medicine is based on clear-cut, on or off, yes or no diagnoses. Most conventional doctors are taught that you either have a disease or you don't. You have diabetes or you don't. There are no gray areas. This approach is not only misguided, it's dangerous because it misses the underlying causes and more subtle manifestations of illness. Practicing medicine this way completely ignores one of the most fundamental laws of physiology, biology, and disease, the continuum concept. There is a continuum from optimal health to hidden imbalance to serious dysfunction to disease. Anywhere along that continuum, we can intervene and reverse the process. The sooner we address it, the better. When it comes to diabetes, 
Most doctors just follow blood sugar, but blood sugar actually rises very late in the disease process. Conventional thinking says that if your blood sugar is 90 or 110, then you don't have diabetes. If your blood sugar is 126, then you do have diabetes. These distinctions are completely arbitrary, and they do nothing to help treat the impending problems. Now, I remember one patient, Darren, he came to see me with mildly elevated blood sugar. I asked Darren if he'd seen his doctor about this, and he said, yeah. And I asked, what did your doctor say? Darren's doctor told him, we're going to wait and watch until your blood sugar is more elevated, and then we're going to treat you with medication. Now, that's crazy. Given our current level of scientific understanding of diabetes, I find this concept of watching and waiting until more serious disease occurs unfortunate, misguided, and in some cases, it's deadly. It is also why diabetes is so woefully and inadequately diagnosed and treated. In fact, millions of Americans suffer needlessly from chronic symptoms. Nearly half of all diabetics are not diagnosed. Nearly all of the 100 million Americans with pre-diabetes are undiagnosed. Why? Most doctors just don't know how to diagnose it or what to do about it because there is no good drug treatment. The truth is that the road to diabetes starts as early as childhood. We now know there is an epidemic of type 2 diabetes in children as young as 8 years old, and that pediatric specialists in diabetes who used to care only for type 1 diabetes or child to onset are now finding their offices overwhelmed with cases of type 2 diabetes. By the time you get diagnosed with diabetes, you've had problems with insulin and blood sugar, which could have been detected 20 or 30 years earlier. That is, if you knew where to look, which most doctors are not trained to do. Insulin resistance and diabetes is often accompanied by many things, including belly fat, fatigue after meals, sugar cravings, high triglycerides, low HDL, high blood pressure, problems with blood clotting, increased inflammation. These clues can often be picked up long before you ever get diabetes and may help you prevent the disease entirely. Now, why is this important? Because insulin resistance can cause substantial health risks even in the absence of full-blown diabetes. This is very important. You don't have to have diabetes to have a problem. In segment one, I already reviewed some of the common complications of diabetes, but what most people, including most doctors, don't realize is that insulin resistance or prediabetes can be just as bad and can cause nearly all the complications of diabetes even in the absence of a technical diagnosis of diabetes. In fact, many people with prediabetes never get diabetes, but they are at severe risk for complications just the same. We could eliminate many of the long-term complications of diabetes if we simply address these symptoms and diagnose the problem much earlier in the process. That is to say, much earlier on the continuum. This leaves us with a couple of questions. One, what's causing our insulin resistance? Two, how can we address the fundamental underlying problem of our bodies resisting the effects of its own insulin? It's only by answering these questions and addressing the real causes of diabetes, the factors that are leading to the problem with insulin resistance in the first place, that we can effectively treat this terrifying disease. The ACCORD study taught us that focusing only on the symptoms of diabetes, like high blood sugar, can actually result in worse outcomes. If we keep doing the same things, namely using conventional medical approaches to diagnosis and treatment of diabetes, then we're going to get the same result, an exploding epidemic of disease and misery. Any hope we have for resolving this pandemic must use a new approach to the diagnosis and treatment of diabetes. That approach is called functional medicine. I'm going to explain what that is and how you can use it to help you heal from diabetes in the next segment of our program.